Hello and welcome to the video. Now many of you may remember that last year we bought a massive haul of cassettes, audio cassette tapes like this. And we picked up about 600 of them. And I said at the time I wasn't really sure if it was a good idea, wasn't sure how it would pan out or how much money I could potentially make. Well, we have now sold them all. Well, I say all, there's five left. So that's near enough for me. And I thought I'd share with you how much money we were able to make from cassette tapes. But before we go into how we did, I thought I'd quickly take you back and show you the original haul. I'm a lot more beardy in this clip. Um, but yeah, take a quick look at this before we uh, talk about how much money we actually made. There's 524 cassettes here. Plus there's this box of blank stuff. Well, not blank, but like recorded stuff like uh, compilations and all sorts of other gubbins in here that somebody has made up themselves. Um, there's about another hundred there. So there's, there's around 600 tapes actually. It's more, way more than I thought it was. Now we paid 35 pounds at a boot sale for most of this. I then bought another um, bag of about 50 odd for a fiver at a yard sale. So this whole lot that you can see behind me owes me 40 pounds. But is it worth doing? Would I recommend buying a massive collection of audio cassettes? At this point, I don't think I would because it is so, so time consuming. Like I say, I've spent hours researching it already. Now I've got to spend a few hours photographing all of these. And then there's the process of listing. And then the other big thing is how long are they going to take to sell? So ask me the same question in a month. I might have a different answer. At this point in time, I'm not sure I'd bother again. But I might change my mind when they start to sell. Okay, so that was me um, in the midst of trying to deal with that haul. So, looking back on it now, would I recommend doing it? That's the question. So let's take a look at the numbers, because what I did was I logged old fashioned style, pen and paper, all of the cassettes as they sold. Now I would have missed a few here and there, but it's pretty accurate, so this gives me a record of how many cassettes, how many lots sold, and the gross total. I didn't break it down to the net on each individual one, but we can try and work that out in a second. So, there are pages and pages and pages. Remember, I started with over 600. So, the gross total from selling loads, that big haul of cassettes, and also there was, I added in, you may have seen in the videos, I picked up a little bundle of rave cassettes, so they're included, and there was a little um, cassette box at a yard sale trail thing that was full of cassettes, so they're added in. So my, my total investment ended up being approximately 45 pounds. And the total figure that we managed to sell. Remember, this is the gross figure. We'll try and work out a net figure in a minute. Is total gross figure. We sold 1,398 pounds worth of cassettes. Yeah, that's more than I ever would have imagined we'd have got back from that. But what I'll do now is we'll try and work out an idea of the net profit on that figure. Okay, so I've done some quick calculations which won't be 100% accurate, but I counted up how many lots are in here that have been recorded in here. Um, and it's about 230. And I reckon about 200 of those would have been either individuals or pairs or ones that I can send as a large letter. So if we say that they cost me a pound each to ship, 
that's £200. And then the other 30 would have gone as parcels or via the courier. So if we average that cost to £4, that's another 120. So let's say shipping is 320. And if you go for eBay fees, 10%, and if we go 15% to include the PayPal, so 15% of the 1,398. Okay, so fees roughly would be about 200 pounds, 209 pounds on here. So we'll call that 210, we'll round it up to 210. So if we're saying 320 for shipping, 210 for fees, the initial investment, um, we were going 45. So 575, we take that off, so that leaves us with our net of approximately 823. So I can't remember how many days work it was to list the cassettes. Um, it wasn't that long once I got into the flow of it. And then when I came to consolidate what was left into bundles, that was another couple of hours work. Um, to make £823. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. It's not bad. And although I was moaning about how much work was involved, with hindsight, looking back, it wasn't as bad as all that. When you're in the middle of a laborious job, it feels like it's never going to end. Um, so the question that I posed in that original video was, would I recommend doing it? Um, honestly, yes. 100%. There's, there was good money in it. I mean, it, it has taken a long time to get to this point. I'm not sure when last year exactly that was. Um, a lot of them were slow, and I got to a point where I still had, I don't know, 100 or so listed and I just took all of those listings down and did two or three job lots to clear what was left because a lot of them were just slow. But a lot of them sold instantly. And what I have learned from this um, is the classic sell. Um, I think the very first one I sold was a Bowie and then there was a Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon. Um, so you're kind of the stuff you would imagine having a market does have a market. Uh, Rolling Stones did well for me. Um, one of the last little bundles to sell was um, Status Quo. I had, I think, five different cassettes, and that was one of the last little bundles to go. I took an offer of £12 on it. Um, so, yeah, it's been really interesting. And also, in that clip, I showed a box of blank cassettes or home recorder cassettes. That was a lucrative box. I almost dismissed it in that, that video there. But within that, once I went through it and really dug into the detail, there was quite a lot of chrome tapes in there. They had been recorded on, but they had a lot of value. I don't know how many there was, maybe 30 or different chrome tapes, Sony ones and, and other brands. And they sold fast and made a lot of money. So don't dismiss the blank stuff. As I just said, I did clear what was left in bundles. And if you wanted a quicker return on cassettes, you know, I, I could have just broken that big haul down into bundles, maybe loosely themed bundles like 80s, 90s, and then done bundles with the blanks. And I could have cleared that haul in a couple of weeks as bundles and made some good profit. I wouldn't have made anywhere near as much as I did taking the kind of long route with it. But if you're much more of the kind of quick flip kind of person, you could still do that with cassettes. Um, I could have put the whole lot on as one job lot. I mean, I, I got them so cheap, I could have made a, a quick flip profit on those 
very, very easily. I chose to take the long route and, and sell them off um, individually in small bundles and then job lot the, the slow stuff. Uh, and it worked out really well. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, what was the grand total again? 1,300 and something. Um, it's been fun. It's been actually enjoyable. Um, as I've said before on this channel, I do enjoy dealing with media, which helps when you're dealing with a big job lot like this. Um, yeah, 1,398. So there we go. That gives you an idea anyway. I hope that was interesting. Um, I found it interesting looking back at the numbers. And as I just said before, I would do it again. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll see you soon. Take care.